Well, it's so good to have Benjamin and Courtney on the show today. How you doing today, Courtney and Ben? Good. Thanks for right. having us. Excited to be here, man. Excited to talk to you. So I'm going to ask each of you my favorite question to kind of get us to know you a little bit better. We'll start out with Courtney. What's the best piece of advice you've ever received? Love yourself. <laughs> <laughs> Unconditionally. <laughs> that i like that too your turn ben i saw you were thinking deeply while she was, I was figuring I was out her turn. <laughs> i like the idea of like you can do anything you set your mind to like like the idea that like it takes work but there's no one who who like has the extra knowledge that you can't attain if you don't if, if you work at it and work to get there i like that I like to ask my guests this question as well. Um, think of somebody, I'll start out with you this time, Ben. Think of somebody who was really important in your life, your development, and just tell us a little bit about that person. Just kind of get a chance to know. So it's, it's, it's my chance to give my guests a chance to give a shout out to somebody who was really so influential in their life. Yeah, if, if I'm allowed to group them as one person, I would honestly just say my family, my, my parents mm. and my brother. Um, you know, we, we ran around with dad's VHS camera. We stole it from him and, and made movies as kids. And, you know, we had, you see a lot of parents aren't supportive of their other kids in the arts or, or creating or making. And my, my family was supportive of us always creating, always making, um, and me and my brother would always make films and things together. So yeah, my family as a whole, I know that doesn't consider one person, but as a unit, yeah, just the support of that. That's so cool. Courtney? Oh, wow. Hands down. It just has to be my high school English and theater teacher. Her name is Jamie Young. Um, I remember freshman, freshman English class the first day. She reads us this children's book uh, called Mrs. Watson Wants Your Teeth. And it, it, I'll, I'll go into it real quick. Um, the story is about this Mrs. Watson. She just has this reputation about her and you know she that she's this curmudgeon person and she wants your teeth and then at the end of it we really learn about her and it's really just a reputation and the big lesson at the end of it was change your perspective and mm. this and this teacher she was always very eccentric and very extravagant and very goofy and i really resonated with that because i was the same way and that and that's how i behaved in, in high school and she had everybody all all these 14 year old freshmen stand up and shout change your perspective change wow. our perspective until we were all pretty sick of it <laughs> but i think that that's the sole reason why I go into everything just with such an open mind and why I'm so quick to dismantle any judgments that I, that I, that, that I, that I, that I come at something with. So I, you know, even when somebody's telling me a story and, you know, I'll catch myself so often dipping into judgment and dipping into, oh, well, why not? and I go, Oh no, I really shouldn't do that. I should really, I should really listen. I should really. And then if I want to stick to my opinion, then I will. I love mm. that. That's awesome. I love to ask people, this is a new question. So you guys get a, a fresh new question on my podcast because mm. you're in the movie industry. What would be the worst movie sequel ever made? The worst. <laughs> Hasn't it already been made? After oh, why? <laughs> oh, why? Worst movie sequel ever made, like one that's existed or one that that could possibly exist. Yeah, I think you get they, you get to pick. If yeah, I had, I if I had they, been made, already been made, so what's been made? Is, so they make them. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> my so my favorite movie of all times, Jaws, like the original oh, Jaws, okay. right? And uh, and I always watch every summer. I watch the original Jaws. I just love that movie. And then I always try to dip into the sequels. I always try because you know I'm like, oh, I want some more Jaws. And then I put in Jaws 2, or, and they're just bad. They're it's just like, don't. Just don't. Act as if they don't exist. Enjoy Jaws is what it is. And just, just you know, those were fan films that were made, the, the, the sequels. So I wonder if, you know how Incredibles, the Incredibles sequel was such a success? We waited a decade for it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. What if it was Incredibles 1.5? 
<laughs> just like the, whatever movie was in between <laughs> right all that, or, or maybe dash is going through like a really petulant puberty phase <laughs> And it's just maybe it's just a dash, a dash, a dash spinoff, a <laughs> one-off. There like, you go. I could see dash. It. It's just him, him misbehaving. Actually, I really, I think that'd be actually really cool. Make it, please. <laughs> I know what's <laughs> one I'm thinking about that hasn't been made, but would be a horrible follow-up movie. Would be Forrest Gump two. Ooh, <laughs> ooh, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, oh yeah, I could see that. I could see that. <laughs> it's yeah. just him fathering Haley Joel Osment. There you go. Yeah. <laughs> did you see uh, Saturday Night Live just did a sketch where they had Forrest Gump, and it was like the it was like the ten year reunion or twenty year high school reunion, and his bully like steps up on stage. He's like, "What's Forrest been up to?" And, and everyone's like, "He did this, and he did this, and he did this." He's like, "Really?" <laughs> so, oh my gosh. Oh, I love that. So let's get into your movie because I'm I'm curious. I think this would be a, this is why we kind of brought you guys on. What led you to make the movie The Pastor's Kid? Yeah, so uh, Pastor's Kid is uh, based on the true testimony of one of my friends. So yeah, I worked in the film industry for quite a while. Ended up at a church doing video. It was a church called Mariners Church out here in California. Um, and so we film testimony videos constantly and put them out, you know, every weekend. And one Easter, of course, we're like rushing around trying to get a testimony video that we need for our Easter service, big Easter service. Um, and a friend of mine that I'd worked with this whole time, I had never heard her story, but she offered up. She's like, I'll share my story. So we sat down and we filmed her journey. And essentially the story that we we filmed is the story of Pastor's Kid is I was so moved by hearing her experience of basically she was raised with an alcoholic mother, um, had to raise her own little brother. Mom then becomes a Christian, you know, gets clean, becomes an executive pastor at a church. Which means she handles kind of the business side of a church. Um, and she's like, everyone praised my mom as being this amazing conversion story. All the while, no one asked about my pain that I went through having her as an alcoholic mother during that time and having to be the other parent, you know, to my little brother. And so she goes, you know, there's then there's a switch as I'm in high school of this mom that I was waking up because she was passed out drunk. I was having to wake her up to go to work. Now, all of a sudden, I want to go out past eight o'clock to be with my friends. And my mom's saying, no, 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 you can't go out past eight. And so for her, she internally felt um, this hypocrisy from the church, you know, and this hypocrisy from that experience of she's like, God didn't see my pain. The church didn't see my pain. So I did everything I could in college to push my mom away, to push God away. Um, and then eventually some incidents happened with her in college, dealing drugs, um, partying too hard, different experiences that kind of forced her to relook at her past and deal with some of the traumas she was raised with. Um, and then at the end, we don't want to spoil it too much, but perhaps she has her own spiritual experience or epiphany that, uh, that helps her realize there's a different path that she could go down. And so anyways, I, I got to film that story while at that church. I had no idea that was her journey. <laughs> And uh, and I just felt like so many people could relate to the story if told in an honest way. And we asked her if we could make the film, and she said yes. So that was that's kind of the journey of how we got the film started, at least. I lo I, lo I lo saw the trailer for the film, and um, one of the things I noticed was that it's got an R rating on it. Mm -hmm. And I'm I'm assuming as a, as a filmmaker making a Christian film that that probably caused you a little bit of angst going. Oh gosh. Do 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 I do I do I pull the story back so that it's it's a PG story? How do you t tell us a little bit about that journey for you personally? Oh, it's been terrible. All <laughs> uh, terrible and amazing all at the same time. I you know, we I didn't when hearing her story because she was a uh, you know, such a close coworker of mine and friend of mine that it's like I felt we needed to honor her story by telling it in the most raw and honest way possible. Every time like while working on the script, we tried to pull back or we tried to, you know, make it not real. And I want to clarify, like we're rated R for language and drug use. Is right. Yes. Basically, um, I just felt the need that if we're stepping into this drug culture, if we're stepping into this lifestyle, that we needed people to speak how people normally speak. And we needed to to make it just like a real uh, the way I say it is it's like a real movie that you would see that has faith in it. Like that was the goal kind of going into it. And what was a little frustrating is we we pitched it to several Christian film producers all around Hollywood. As I I met with with like if you yeah I, I've met with a lot of them and uh, and every time we tell them that it's like we're making this film that like the goal is it's it's just a normal movie that has faith in it. 
And it can bridge that gap. It can be that movie in the middle that both a Christian can watch and someone who's been burnt by the church can watch and experience and feel like it's honest. Um, and every Christian producer we met with, it was water it down to PG and sell a book with it. That was the, that was the thing that everybody said is like sell a book, sell Bible curriculum, you know, all of this stuff. And so what I learned is there is this machine behind the Christian film industry and and I'm not trying to like poo poo that or or be negative to that in any way. It's just to me that felt um, manufactured and it didn't feel like the right approach. But uh, I, I'm not gonna I, lie to you. I had a final meeting that I was told that and that we could have gotten maybe some pretty big funding if we would have done that. And I called my wife and I was like, "Do we do this or do we make it in this R-rated way that we feel like called to do?" And she was like, "We do it ourselves. Don't worry about it." And so. Um, yeah, that, that's what we did with Pastors Kids. So it's it's definitely meant to be as real as possible, as honest as possible. And that, though that may be uncomfortable for some people, we've been saying like, don't feel like you're forced to go see this movie. But uh, maybe in your head, think of if there's someone in your life that it would be great for you to take to see this movie, or you invite to this movie that wouldn't watch, um, you know, a, a traditional faith film. So, right. You have any thoughts, Courtney? Oh no, it's just funny. Um... <clears throat> Because we're definitely breaking the mold here, or we're just chipping off a little part of the mold. Like I said this, um, if faith film is the big umbrella term, we're trying to just add a little subgenre to it where the these stories can be told in a real way. Because mm. Ben, what, what was the phrase you've been saying? There's faith and family. Yes. Which we love, we love, we love that genre. I mean, I think it accomplishes many amazing things, and um, a lot of people feel seen by those movies. A lot of people resonate with those movies, but then there's a lot of people who don't. I think there's a lot of uh, people who, you know, they 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 aren't represented by 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 faith films, just in general. And then these, these this is for them. This is say, hey. Um, you can be imperfect you can be you can you can make mistakes um that doesn't have any bearing on whether or not you're worthy of love or acceptance or whether or not you belong here or anything like that just hey here, here's here's one story that maybe is like yours um and maybe it's not maybe it's like somebody you know um but then it's funny so we're definitely breaking a mold and when you do that you know, there, there's pushback, there's confusion, there's what are you trying to do? Mm -hmm. there, you know, there's you just run into so many things. And it's funny, Ben, because I remember you telling me a story about, okay, they either wanted you to water it down or they wanted you to make it like Breaking Bad. <laughs> oh, <laughs> they wanted, yeah. Okay, like, hey, well, maybe, 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 I maybe, maybe you should that. move to the cartel. Or yes, yeah. and then so it was. We, that we, was a, no, they, just, <laughs> they literally were like, the cartel is going to be like coming by her window, and she's going to be like, oh, I gotta like fight them off. And I'm like, what are you talking about? <laughs> so they're like, it's the Christian Breaking Bad, and I'm just what? like, no, <laughs> we're not what? doing that. So they just kept. I mean, Forgot and rightly so. That. I understand the machine in this way. I understand things need a genre, but it. So it was funny, just which end of the spectrum people wanted to push push us in but but it's hard because you know things need a genre for it to make sense to cat to be in a category because people need to know what they're going into but then we it does have a genre one we're one we're creating right, and, and right. then it's just um it's just an, always an interesting sticky journey when you when you do some try to do something different well even when i worked at that church it's like i filmed so many testimonies that i was like I filmed over 200 while I was there at that church. And I was like, if this was told in a raw, real way, this one's like an Oscar winner. If this one was told in a raw, real way, this could be an Oscar winner. And I think so often, uh, you know, because faith and family has become so paired together, it's like you can't have one without the other. When we make every story PG, we lose some of that depth. You know what I mean? That could that makes the story powerful and not that. Um, every film needs to be R-rated or not that we want to go overly explicit, right, with the content we put in our films. But I think there is a beauty in showing the realities of the darkness that God steps into for people. And that's where we get a lot of power for our story. But when your character 
you know, is in the before Christ, you know, uh, part of their life. And it's just as clean and perfect as the after Christ part, you know, it's like, well, then why did Jesus need to come for this person in general <laughs> if, if they were just as good as they are now? You know what I mean? And so anyways, that's, I think, a little trope that we get stuck in sometimes. No, and I think quite uh, frankly, and this is what we hope, that I think the Christian community is hungry for something like this. I mean, we, this is what we hope. It's what I think. Um, I think we... We, we want to be real and we, we, we're, I think we're done pretending. I mean, I, I at least am, you know, because it, it gets kind of exhausting. <laughs> okay, can we just be us? <laughs> yeah, as a pastor, I, I run across, like you talk about, a lot of stories of people who were outside the church and then came back. And I think it's hard for Christians who maybe have spent in the church, been in the church so long that all their friends are Christian. And so, they yeah, do friends have friends who are, who are the the Christian film artist people who you they've been Christian for long before Christ. They thought, you know, I was just a little bit like this, and then now I'm just a little bit better version of this. But yep. when we bring in people who are who have struggled, who have drifted away, who have struggled with their faith, who got involved in in the world's culture, their stories are messy. And I always told my congregation, missions is messy. Mm -hmm. um, people's stories are messy. And if we really want to be a church that reaches out to our community, we're going to have some messy stories and some messy lives in our pews. We're going to have, at times, colorful language. They, they haven't, you know, God right. tamed the tongue last and, and a wallet, you know. So <laughs> those, those are the things that we have to be willing to understand that their journey wasn't your journey. And mm -hmm. you're right. I think people will see in, in a movie like this, that the, the people we're trying to reach are the ones who have gone through the stories that you're you're telling this pastor's kid story. Uh, there's and, and in our country now there is more more drug deal drug use. There's more broken lives. There are more dysfunctional families. So yeah, a lot of the people we're going to bring in are going to look like by the story you're telling. Well, and it's crazy too to even think. So we shot this movie uh, several several years ago. Um, it's just been a process getting it released, and it's crazy even seeing the fe like I don't want to get political or anything, but the fentanyl stuff that's been coming in too, and how to me that even has added this extra layer of like some of that's being hidden within cocaine and some of these other things, and so this lifestyle that we're viewing now of her life almost seems a little bit more dangerous and risky than it did back when we filmed the film in some ways, and so, um, but but just kind of um, piggybacking off what you're saying is. You know, we had a chance to screen this film for conservative Midwest Christian ladies, like older conservative Christian ladies, and we let them know what it was going to be up front. You know, we were very clear about it, and they went into, and I was very thankful they went into it um, with an open mind. And we got these reviews back, and you know, some of them like didn't appreciate the language. They're like, I understood why you did it, but they go, I knew a person like this in college. Or I had experienced this type of thing in college, or maybe even I was this person in college. And what we found is that it allowed these kind of more conservative Christian older ladies to be able to open up and share their own stories that they have felt like they've had to hide for all of these years. And so for me, that's kind of made me realize that whether we like it or not, everybody has an R-rated story. Everybody has experience darkness they've experienced language they've experienced all of these things whether you've participated or not you know that's a whole different discussion but it's like you have touched and seen the darkness of the real world um and so if we can step into this film or use this film even as a way to say man if god can use her story then god can use my story and i can open up more and share about the things i've struggled with or things that i've gone through and not have to put that that false you know face up anymore that wall yeah, and we can honor and set, honor and celebrate everybody's journey because I really think ultimately that's what it's all about anyway. And then just we 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 hear all these stories of born again Christians and they're always so beautiful and of somebody who who made who's made some mistakes and how do we then honor who they are today if we white wash is the term whitewash? Yeah, <laughs> I don't yeah, yeah. think so. If how do we honor who they are today if we sanitize S sanitize yeah if we sanitize their every step of the way that got them there not to not to glorify it but to say hey to just tell the truth about hey these are the things i've done these this is the things i've lived through and hey here i am today you know i think it's, it's way more powerful than like hey i'm i've been this way forever and you should have been too or something yeah. you know it's just the message gets um 
I think lost if if you start to whittle away parts of the truth. Mm, yeah, yeah, yeah. I always say that every conversion is a miracle. It's a miracle of the mm. Holy Spirit moving. Some of them just seem more larger miracles than others because of where they came from. Um, but you're right. I think we need to tell these stories because that is a lot of people in our community, our friends, our family. And to, to let them know that even if you've been down this far, God can still use, can God, God will still look for you. God will still search for you. God will still find mm -hmm. you. And it's still possible for you to become in a, in a relationship with him. And so your story is not so broken that God will ignore you. I think that's mm. an important story for us to tell. Well, even in the testimony I filmed, she talked about when she kind of has this moment at the end where maybe she uh, has a spiritual experience. I'm trying not to spoil it too much, but right. at the end, she, she has a moment. I'll put it that way. And she basically said, you know, that at that moment, I felt uh, seen and fully seen, fully known, fully heard and fully loved. And, you know, Courtney, you've said in, in some other interviews, it's like, who is not striving for that? Who, who does not feel that way where we want to feel that way? We want to feel fully seen and fully known and fully loved. And that's one of those things that I think telling the story in this way, the hope is that both people of faith and people not of faith can go to this movie. And whether you fully agree with, with the, you know, religion or the faith being presented in the film, that my hope was once, it, like if an atheist sat down in our film, by the time they got to the end of that movie, I wanted to sit, them to sit here and say, yes, please choose that religion. Please choose that faith. Like, God, please, you know, step into her life because they don't, they, they don't want to see her continue down the path she has gone. And no matter what the other trajectory would be, our hope is that, you know, the audience will sit here and say, take that path to get away from what you what you've been because going back to the lifestyle that she's been presenting has proven to be empty and and void of any of meaning for her no and then and that and then you do see her longing for it that's that throughout throughout the the her whole journey is you know you you see you have these moments with her where she 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 long you see her missing it you see you see you see her hear something and she's like, oh, you know, um, where she's going down this path. But every now and then there's this, there's tiny wake ups throughout. What did I mean, it mean for you, Courtney, to be part of this film? I'm just curious. You know, it's, it's one thing to direct it, but what, it, what impact did it have on you being in it? Oh, wow. <laughs> That's a big one. Um, well, I, let me start, start with, with the the cliche of it's just an honor, and I and I mean that. Um, but it just just to be a part of something that that's where the intentions. I'm gonna get emotional. Where the intentions are just so true. Where the intentions are just hey, I there's something here that's not happening. Um, there's people who are lost and we're, we're trying to go get them um, to be a part of something like that, to be part of something that's just trying to make a small impact somewhere. I think that just meant to the world to me. I'm so sorry. Yeah, um, as no, it's artist, fine. You know, because I mean, I think, you know, you get into a creative life for this. I mean, and then I think you get, you get, um, distracted just like riley by by shiny things by things that feel good like hollywood and all these other things and but to say hey we're trying to do something honest it might not work it might be a bad idea but let's see let's see if we, let's see if we can accomplish it um it's just so um you know what 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 i'm here for um there is one other thing that I was going to say when I got distracted by, <laughs> by, that was by, awesome, by my meltdown here. <laughs> um, what was it? What was it? What was it? Um, come back to me. I'll add. I'll sure. add to <laughs> I wanted to add, you know, kind of when Courtney and I originally sat down as we were talking about who is this film for, and there was a family member in my life that had basically shared they kind of deconstructed, they'd burned by the church, walked away from the faith. Um, and I basically had told, told Courtney that, like, you know, this if that's the one person i want to hit and that there are so many other people in our culture in our world like deconstruction religious deconstruction is a movement right now on social media and in the world and i'm like how can we help 
those people feel seen and feel heard and for them to be able to step into the film. And we're not denying the pain that they have felt in the church and the judgment that they felt in the church. But yet we're also saying you don't have to throw the baby out with the bathwater is that you can explore faith. You can explore a relationship with God and Jesus apart from that church that was burnt, that was mean to you or burnt you and that you can feel seen here and you can feel, you know, that, that we're not just um, trying to, to sweep that under the rug and say, it doesn't matter. And, and I, I don't feel like we've seen that because in, in film, it's either going to go so far that it says all religion, bad, all belief, bad, like that's going to be the perspective or, or you're going to make a, a Christian film, a traditional Christian film. that's going to just say, get over it. It's no big deal. And our film, I, I, I didn't want it to sit. I wanted it to sit in the middle and say, your pain is valid. And let's deal with it and talk about it. It's funny you mention that. I've actually had this on my heart to connect with people who have either walked away from the church or walked away and came back. And so I'm actually mm. actually reached out on social media to just to a couple of Christian groups to say, hey, I'm looking for people to come on do a podcast episode with me mm. on why you left the church and and for those who came back, why you came back. Mm. And I'm anticipating. I'm going to hear a lot of what you just described, that there was a lot of hurt, a lot of pain. And I, and I wanted to do it because I don't think the church has heard from those people that have walked away mm. and understand their pain. Because when I even bring up to the church how you connecting with those people, a lot of times the church just says, well, they need to just get over it and come back. The church yeah. is the best place in the world to be. I'm like, yeah, but they were hurt by the church. Are you ready mm. to hear their stories? And so I want to give an avenue for them to tell their stories on the podcast. It's a little bit of a different shift, but my goal still is the same thing is how do we bridge the, uh, build a bridge between what the church was to them and what it can be again or is again. Mm, it's awesome. I remembered what I wanted to touch on lastly. Oh, good. Uh, I think it has to do with everything you just said, like the, and how we're just trying to do something small. Um, and cause you, this is, I think, an old adage that you can't, perhaps, maybe you can't change the whole world, but you can change one person's whole entire world. Ooh, world. Like and just that. so many people, there's, there's been so many people in my life who have changed my whole world. And I just, the, I think those people, they're not, they're not Gandhi, they're not anything. There's just been people in my life who've just had such an impact. Back to the, the question that you asked at the beginning, it's just that those people, they can be so influential on one person and then can that be enough? Mm, that's awesome. Yeah, that's awesome. So if you, what are you guys excited about in this season besides this film coming out on March 15th? <laughs> yes, yes. I, I don't, right now I have blinders on, so I don't see anything <laughs> past March 15th and this weekend. Um, well, I, I mean, we've been doing the podcast tour and it's been very exciting to talk to Christians and to talk to, um, people. And we even had, you know, someone say, I went into the film, a skeptic, and I came out a supporter and, and that's kind of been exciting for me to see that, uh, I do, I truly believe the majority, like majority of Christians are ready for something like this. And even when we're, we're posting our ads and running our ads or so on social media for the release, you know, I'm the one answering all the comments, you know, in the comments section. And, uh, and I'll say, you know, we've gotten a handful of comments that have just been like, how can you be a Christian and make an R rated movie? Or how can you, I've been told I've been in bed with the devil. I'm going to tell you, I have not, I just want to make it clear. I have not been in bed with the devil. Um, and you know, I, I, it, but I'll, I'll answer these questions. You know, we have a handful of comments that have been the, those kinds of, of comments. And what's been beautiful is I don't let it sit. And I, and I have discussions with these people. I say, you know, the Holy Spirit led us to make the film in this way. This is why we did these things. And then they'll come back with something snotty, you know, and then I'll respond again. And I, my, my goal in this, this discussion is that there is beauty that can be had within the church about art and creativity and what is too far and what is not too far. What are things we can explore? And I feel like we just haven't had that discussion in so long. And so really trying to use these comments to be a way of cultivating that discussion of maybe this is too far for you. And I respect that, but can we sit here and say that God can use something that goes dark like this that shows the reality like this. And what's been honestly so moving to see is people change in the comments is, is the majority of them will say, I don't agree with it, but I'm praying for you guys and that it's successful. You know, like I understand it now. And, and even having people that I don't know come in and defend us has been really interesting too in the comments where they're like, 
Have you read the Bible? The Bible's all rated, <laughs> you know? And, and so I, and I would say the majority of it has been respectful. You know, it takes a little while to get there, but it's been really lovely to see just that the majority of people are in support of what we're trying to do and they understand it and, and they kind of come to our defense. And then even just to see those harsh comments, we're changing minds and changing hearts in the way that we have this discourse. So I hope that, I, I, honestly, I, I hope the movie success, success, I hope it reaches the right people, but I also hope that it can start this discussion within the church about, you know, can we start telling some of these stories a little more R and real? So anyway, it's a long-winded awesome. answer, but yeah. No, it's good. You, you mentioned earlier that someone suggested that you, alongside this film, put together Bible studies, content. Is that also a part of what you guys are going to be doing? Nope. <laughs> I'm, uh, I'm, uh, nope. <laughs> I basically, I talked to the person whose story it's based on and it's, you know, it's her story, but then there's also aspects of her mom's story in it as well. Cause her mom has an experience that leads to all this. And so I had said like, you know, I said, do you want to write a book about it? And she's like, Nope. Yes. And she's like, my, my mom, she's like, my mom has thought about writing a book at some point. Um, but she, that's, that's way far down the line. And, uh, and I, I just, you know, for us, it was this idea of like, uh, we wanted the film to stand on its own and not, not feel like it tastes like the Christian film industry, if that makes sense. Right. We wanted it to be, because the moment you start tying it to things like that, um, general audiences who aren't of faith are going to smell it a mile away. And they're going to sit here and say, this feels like propaganda or this is pushing selling a thing. And I, I'm trying to, I'm not trying to say that all films that do that are propaganda or trying to sell but for us i i just worry with the audience you're going for that it would it would feel disingenuous yeah so. i feel like it was a slippery slope and no not slippery slope but we we definitely wanted a film with no agenda right other, other than hey this exists this is this is reality and you know any possible thing where we're like hey this is a little this might kind of have a, has an agenda we kind of wanted to stay away from i get that i like that so here's your chance you have 30 seconds to look, give a message to the world you go first ben oh boy and this is just like this is just like positive message any message you want you got you have the platform for the world for 30 seconds you go oh boy okay i would hope that anyone listening to this would know that nobody is ever too far from god and that God wants to have a relationship with you right oh, now. You He's desperate. So, Courtney, why don't you go? Right now. <laughs> oh, oh, no. oh, hold on. Did I freeze? Um, you, you froze, Ben. Yeah, you oh, did. No. Froze. Take two. You have to say it take again. Take two. Do it again. Am I good? Okay, okay. <laughs> yeah. Let me see how long 30 seconds. Uh, my hope is anyone listening to this would know that God wants to have a relationship with them right now and that he is yearning for them right now. And there's nothing that he hasn't seen doesn't know that you've done and that uh, your purpose, you can have purpose and value um, from a God that loves you very, very much. Great. Great. Um, and I'm, I'm going to actually spin something you said, Keith, earlier. Um, I'm going to use one half of a sentence you said is that you're not so bad. Mm. you're just not so bad i mean because i think we i, I might i don't speak just personally i just get it can get so nitpicky about myself and so self-loathing that you know that i just don't get productive or i just i i i can think all the things that riley thought but you know you're just not so bad i like that mm -hmm. my other favorite question i'd like to ask my guests is this one what do you want your legacy to be You ask the best questions. <laughs> oh, wow. Maybe it's because I just woke up, but, um, <laughs> but I, I ultimately think that anybody I've encountered in my life, I hope that they felt, I hope they feel seen and I hope mm. they feel accepted and like 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 they're worth like they're worthy of given being given the benefit of the doubt just like anybody else like we're all we all belong here and it doesn't matter who you are it doesn't matter where you've come from i think i try to do this in my life i try to take everybody for who they are and it doesn't matter 
forget a million dollars, it didn't matter to have two dollars. It's just I I hope I like anybody I I've, I've ever encountered, you know, at the end of my life just feels that I've just taken them for who they are. I love that. What you got for me, Ben? You know, I think if there is like a legacy, and I don't know if this is tying it too much to the movie, but I like that idea of creating art that um that people can revisit down the line even when I'm not here and have it feel like we were trying to do something or that we had a purpose behind what we were making um, and that it can resonate with people long after I'm gone. Is that? I love it. So for those who want to see the movie, where can they look for the pastor's kid and where can they connect with you guys on social media? Yeah, so pastorskidthemovie.com is where you can go um, to see a lot of our content. We even have the original testimony video that I filmed while working at that church. You can see that. I've I've put a little thing on. It's a spoiler warning because it does tell the entire story yes. um, if you go and check that out. Um, but yeah, tickets should go on sale today is the plan right now. And our weekend is March 15th. We have March 15th, 16th, and 17th are, is our weekend. Those are our days. And basically, um, we have to sell out those tickets, get those tickets sold. And if that is a successful weekend, they extend us uh, to more theaters and more places. So right now, we're in select theaters. That first weekend of March uh, 15th, and we're just pushing everyone to say, try to show up that weekend. And then, uh, yeah, hopefully it continues. And then I, we're, we're on social media as Pastor's Kid the movie as well. Then, Courtney. Yeah, yeah. we're on Fandango. Oh, yep. You just go mm -hmm. to Fandango and just wherever movie tickets are bought, mm -hmm. you can find our movie. <laughs> um, and then, yeah, if you want to hang out with me on the internet, I'm on Instagram. I'm uh, Bandicoot. It's my last name with another O T B A N D E K O O T. And uh, that's primary, the prim kind of the only platform I'm on. I, I keep thinking I'll make a TikTok and I might, but, and I'll be the same handle eventually. <laughs> but Instagram. Well, thank you guys so much for coming on. And, and I pray that your movie does resonate because I think it's an important story to tell. We need to know that we're not all shiny and good back <laughs> where we're coming from, but that God reaches down into the depths of whatever our issues are and draws us out and shows us by the power of the Holy Spirit that we're loved and valued and cared for. And so I pray that people get that message from your movie. Thank you. I appreciate oh, thank that, you, man. Kate. 